the world's largest operational space launch facility, the Cosmodrome in Baikonur, Kazakhstan. A huge giant, 50 meters long and weighing more than 300 tons, stands against the cold night sky. This is a place of legend, top secret during the Cold War. This is where the very first man-made satellite, the Sputnik, was shot into space in 1957. In 1961, the first human, Yuri Gagarin, traveled into space from this launch pad. And now, an international crew is preparing for the 30th mission. One of the astronauts is Andre Kuipers of the Netherlands. It was very cold. It was the coldest launch ever. And uh, so they gave us special, uh, special clothing around our necks because otherwise it would have been too cold for us. And then, uh, then you walk forward and uh, you see uh, your, your family on the side and they had a big banner. I, I did an effort to, uh, to look uh, where the family was and, uh, and to read a bit what was on the banner. Uh, so that, that, that is nice. So I, I was not nervous. Um, you, you train so much, you know, and uh, you want to do this. Then astronauts are only worried that they might cancel the launch or something. And that doesn't happen much with Soyuz. So you feel pretty relaxed. The Dutch ESA astronaut will be flying to the ISS along with US astronaut Don Pettit and Russian cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko. You drive to the rocket, you see the rocket for the first time. You saw it in the factory, uh, but you never saw it going out and being uh, erected and fueled. So it's the first time you see the rocket and uh, it's beautiful because it's alive. You see all the, the, the condensation uh, because of the cold fluids. And uh, it's, it's very impressive to see, oh, this is my rocket. And uh, then you go up with the elevator, the same one, it's the same launch tower that Kakarin took, so it's also very historical. This is Andre Kuiper's second trip to the ISS. He spent nine days there in 2004. This time, He'll be staying for five months. When you launch, it's shaking, noise. We cannot look outside, so we just follow procedures, look at the screens, if everything is okay. And, uh, and before you know it, within nine minutes, you are in orbit. That goes pretty fast, actually. It's a great moment. It takes the crew two days to reach the ISS. Andre Kuipers is making it possible for us to tag along on this unique journey. The images he records will be the first ever 3D TV documentation of life in space. Coming on board of the space station, that was different. I remember from my first flight when I came in, it smelled a bit oily, metal. Uh, but this time I came in in a, a new Russian module, the MIM-1, and it was still smelling like a new car and uh, very pristine and the walls were clean and uh, so that was uh, interesting to come aboard that way. But I immediately felt at home and I thought, hey, I know this, I know this, I've been here before. U.S. astronaut Don Pettit, who also arrived together with Andre Kuipers, is on board the space station for the third time. They greet the commander, NASA astronaut Dan Burbank, who has already been on board for four weeks. He brought along his guitar. So I floated everywhere I could. And then I went to the cupola, and that is uh, our European-built watchtower, and it's fantastic. So you have windows all around. Uh, that's of course, one of the first things I wanted to do, to see the planet.
For me, it all started with uh, my grandmother buying some science fiction uh, booklets. And this was the Perry Rodan series, a German, originally German series, but it's also in Dutch. And I was hooked. I thought, wow, this is great. You know, it was about uh, spaceships and, and alien planets, space suits, and all these kind of things. And uh, I was reading in bed, you know, when I had to sleep with, uh, with a flashlight under the, under the blankets. I was reading my Perry Rodan uh, books. And, um, uh, but that was, that was a, a boy's dream. That dream has now come true for Andre Kuipers. Now it's time to get to work. Equipment is assembled for the task outside the station. These spacewalks last six hours. You can't just pop back in to grab a different screwdriver. Astronauts have to be all-round talents. That's the only way they can survive. Andre Kuipers is a medical doctor, but on board, he's a mechanic, scientist, and even a plumber. Even if it looks light and easy, weightlessness is a stressful condition for the body. The astronauts need two to three hours of physical fitness training each day. Weightlessness causes muscles and bones to atrophy. But how can you lift weights if there's no gravity? Engineers have created complicated sports equipment involving springs and vacuum hydraulics. There's uh, several ways to wash. You can use wet wipes. We have plenty of those on board and you use it for everything. Uh, if you want some more uh, water, you can indeed squeeze the water on you and it, it just stays on you. It's a big bubble. You have to be careful that it doesn't get here because you drown in a bubble of water. And in the beginning it's, uh, it's strange, but after a while you, uh, you, yeah, you get used to it. 